This video was produced as an educational project and is not intended to provide expert information. Always consult manufacturers' information and qualified professionals before attempting to service your biomedical equipment. Always follow safety warnings. In this video, we discuss how to use, maintain, and repair a non-invasive blood pressure, or NIBP, device. Blood pressure maintains proper heart function and blood circulation. Changes from a normal range can indicate a serious condition and should be evaluated. Making sure that the device works properly is necessary to ensure patient safety. First, we will explain physiologically how blood pressure is measured. Blood pressure is recorded as systolic over diastolic pressure. Systolic pressure is the peak blood pressure when the heart is contracting. Diastolic pressure is the lowest blood pressure when the heart is relaxing and refilling with blood. Pressure is recorded in millimeters of mercury. Typical adult blood pressure is 120 over 80 millimeters mercury. Blood pressure for children is usually lower at around 100 over 70 millimeters mercury. Hypertension or high blood pressure puts added stress on your heart to pump blood through your body. It also puts extra pressure on your vessel walls and results in high risk for heart attack and stroke. Hypotension or low blood pressure can lead to dizziness and fainting due to inadequate circulation of blood. There are two main methods used for measuring blood pressure. We will start by describing techniques for measuring blood pressure manually. Necessary equipment includes the blood pressure cuff, which is used to apply pressure to the patient's arm and restrict blood flow during the measurement. The manometer gauge, which shows the current pressure in the cuff, and the bulb, which is pumped to increase pressure in the cuff. To measure blood pressure manually, place the blood pressure cuff on the patient's arm. Then, place the stethoscope at the bottom of the cuff as shown and listen for sounds or beats corresponding to the patient's blood flow. Close the valve on the bulb and squeeze the bulb to increase pressure in the cuff. Continue until sounds of blood flow can no longer be heard. Cuff pressure is now higher than the patient's peak blood pressure and no blood is flowing in the vessels under the cuff. Slowly release the valve so that pressure in the cuff decreases. The first pressure at which you hear a beat again corresponds to the systolic pressure and should be recorded as the first number in the blood pressure. As the cuff pressure continues to decrease, continue to listen until sounds of blood flow can no longer be heard. This pressure corresponds to the diastolic pressure and should be recorded as the second number in the reported blood pressure. When placing the cuff on the patient's arm, make sure to properly align the cuff by placing the marker in line with the patient's artery. Before squeezing the bulb, make sure that the valve on the bulb is closed so that pressure in the cuff will increase and no air will escape from the bulb. The initial inflation pressure must be above the patient's systolic pressure to cut off blood flow. After inflation, the valve is opened slightly to let the pressure slowly decrease. Listen for sounds as described previously to properly record the patient's blood pressure. This drop in pressure must occur slowly to ensure that the range during which the sounds of blood flow can be heard is accurately determined. The other method for measuring blood pressure uses an automated machine. This method is especially useful if repeated measurements are needed during a medical procedure. When using an NIBP device to measure blood pressure, first follow the same procedure for placing the cuff on the patient. When this process is completed, simply start the blood pressure measurement by pressing the start button on the NIBP machine. In this method, the NIBP device automatically inflates and deflates the cuff. During cuff deflation, it detects physical changes in the blood vessel as the blood begins to flow, 
rather than detecting sounds as in the manual method. The device correlates the occurrence of these signals with the pressure in the cuff to determine the systolic and diastolic pressures. During this procedure, the machine will continually inflate the cuff to a specified pressure, pause at this pressure for a couple seconds, and then slowly deflate the cuff. Then, once it reaches a pressure below diastolic pressure, it will deflate more rapidly. Finally, it will report the patient's blood pressure on the screen. If the initial inflation pressure does not go above the systolic pressure, the device may try to inflate the cuff again to a higher initial inflation pressure. This should not be interpreted as a malfunction in the device unless it occurs more than two or three times. The NIBP machine has a variety of parameters that can be adjusted to change how or when it measures the patient's blood pressure. Three functions that are frequently used on automated devices include setting the initial inflation pressure, setting an interval for blood pressure monitoring, and setting alarms. Adjusting these parameters will be different on each NIBP device, but we will demonstrate how to use these functions on one such machine. On most NIBP devices, there is a default initial inflation pressure of 180 millimeters of mercury, which is set automatically when the device turns on. However, if you require a higher or lower inflation pressure to adequately restrict blood flow through the artery, then this initial value can be changed. To do this, go under the parameters menu, select NIBP, then choose set start pressure. From here, Utilize the knob to adjust the inflation pressure. When done, return to the normal or home screen. During some medical procedures, the patient's blood pressure will need to be measured at a certain interval. NIBP machines can be programmed to measure blood pressure on a set cycle of a specific duration. In order to do this, go to the parameters menu, select NIBP, then choose interval. From here, the knob can be utilized to select a time interval between measurements and then return to the normal or home screen. Setting alarms on a machine may be necessary to check if a patient is exhibiting hypertension or hypotension. In order to set an alarm, press the Limits button under the Alarms category. From here, press Set Alarms and use the knob to set an upper and lower limit for both the systolic and diastolic pressure. Once finished, return to the normal or home screen. If a patient's blood pressure is out of the ranges specified for systolic or diastolic pressure, an alarm will sound. Regardless of which method you use, be sure to follow some common practices. First, use the proper cuff size. Use of the wrong cuff size can result in incorrect blood pressure measurements. Cuffs come in different sizes for infants, children, and adults. Second, a few basic mistakes should be considered before determining that the device doesn't function properly. Ensure that the NIBP machine is plugged into the wall before trying to use it. Also, ensure that the outlet into which it is plugged is functioning properly. Finally, ensure that the device has been turned on before trying to use any of its functions. Another common problem is that the NIBP machine has not been calibrated properly. In order to ensure that it is calibrated, one can use a manual NIBP device and connect it to the automated machine. This should be done using a T connector so that the NIBP hose from the machine connects to both the bulb and the manometer gauge from the manual device. 
turn on the device and immediately hold down the freeze button under display. Press the button until the diagnostics main menu comes up. Then select diagnostic test, choose NIBP, and finally select static pressure calibration. To perform the calibration, Squeeze the bulb, increasing the pressure to about 280 millimeters mercury. If the automated machine does not read the same pressure as the manometer gauge, then the machine is not calibrated properly and will need to be recalibrated. If the device is not inflating to a high enough pressure, there may be a leak. A leak test can be done to determine if there is a leak. To do this, turn the machine on. Hold the freeze button until the diagnostics main menu appears. Then click diagnostic test, choose NIBP, and then select leak test. This test shows how much pressure leaks out of the machine over a five second interval. If there is a large pressure drop, there is likely a leak. This leak could be due to a hole in the tube, a loose connection, or a faulty O-ring. A hole in the tubing can be found by submerging the tube in soapy water. When the tube is pressurized, bubbles form at the site of any holes in the tube. This can be fixed by replacing the tubing. If possible, reuse the connectors at the ends of the tubing since it can be hard to find the right connectors. Loose connections can also let air escape from the system. All connections should be tight. There are many different types of connectors that connect as shown. These can be checked for leaks by spraying soapy water over them while under pressure. Faulty O-rings can also let air out of the system. This can be fixed by removing the O-ring and replacing it with the properly sized ring as shown. This is just a brief introduction to blood pressure systems. As you now know, proper maintenance of NIBP machines is vital to ensuring the health and safety of the patient. If more knowledge is required to use or repair an NIBP device, information can be found online through videos, NIBP manuals, and other relevant documents.